And God bless y'all. Thank y'all for coming. Uh, y'all be sure to make those folks welcome this morning. Now, we are getting only one. Um, we are getting ready to go view for Ellie, y'all. And uh, so, um, it is time to get down to business for the giant spring youth rally. I've been in revival this week down in York, South Carolina. We had a wonderful service Friday night when everybody went. The Rockingham group came and met with us. We sang. Then last night was really good too. So it's been good all the way around. And I'm telling you something, best, best advice I can give anybody here is you better get your heart as right with God as you can get it and get in church get you a good Bible-believing church and be a part of it and, uh, and grab, it, grab a hold of everything that's going on, back it up, and enjoy it. Amen. Support it with your prayers, your presence, your purse, and everything. Take your Bible, turn to 2 Timothy chapter number 3. The book of 2 Timothy chapter number 3. The book of 2 Timothy chapter number 3. This is the last epistle, that means letter, that the apostle Paul wrote before they cut his head off. This was the close of his ministry. This was the last thing God gave him to write before they killed him. And he was killed for preaching the gospel. They cut his head off. They're still doing that today in other countries. We think stuff like that don't happen now. It is happening. Probably as much persecution against Christians right now as there ever have been in history. We're just spoiled, rotten brats here in America and don't realize it. So this morning, I want you to look at um, 2 Timothy chapter 3, and it gives you about 20 descriptive words or phrases that describe the last days. And I'm not going to read them all. They're in verses 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Look at all them them words that describe the last days. Now look at verse 8, and I'm going to talk about these two fellas for a minute, and it said, now as Janese, see verse 8, now as Janese and Jambres with men of corrupt minds and reprobate concerning the faith. It said three things about those men there in that day. It said they resisted the truth it said they had corrupt minds and it said they were reprobate concerning faith y'all listen it said three things about them people in the last day now put that on tv now tiktok cbs cnn fox news put all this in context and say these men did three things they resisted the truth it, it didn't say they said Ah, we'd rather not hear that. They resisted it. Put forth a resistance. We don't want the truth. You say, but don't you want to know? No, no. We're going to do what we want to do. I don't care what God said. I don't care what the preacher said. I don't care what mom and dad said. I don't care what the Bible said. I'm going to do what I want to do. You are a professional spoiled brat, what you are. That's what you are. Uh, and uh, one of these days, you're going to smack right into a wall one day, and the Lord going to get your attention. And that's what they said. They said they resist the truth. Now, there's something wrong with somebody that don't want to hear the truth. I'm, I don't always like the truth, but I want to hear it. When you go to a doctor and you get examined and everything, and you come in here and he said, no, I'm going to have some, no, no, don't tell me the truth. Give me some sugar pill to make me feel better. Give me something to make me uh, enjoy life. No, you look at me and say, tell me the truth. Let's get it over with. Tell me the truth. And that's why he come to church. You don't come to church just to make yourself feel better. You go to church and say, look, preacher, I'm, like, I'm, a, I'm a sinner. This is a hospital. Give me the medicine that I need. I want to hear the truth, right? You know, we're, uh, we are, we're, we're in a weird day, man. We're in a weird day. It's, we're paranoid, scared to death of, of the real truth. And God, I told them down there at that revival that I heard about these old country people that's way up there in the mountains. And this country is cornbread, and that never been nowhere. And back when they first made a first restaurant up there, and uh, and they, old man, no woman went to it. And they they went over there, and they sat down in the corner, and it was a restaurant where it had mirrors all the way around the walls like that. 
Well, they sat down there for a minute, and they sat down and looked at the menu, looked up. The man kept looking up, looking up, looking up. He said, don't look now, but every time I look over there, them people looking at us. There's the only ones in there. He said, I looked at that man. Every time I look at him, he's looking back at me. She turned around. She said, oh, she's looking too. I said, well, I don't know what their problem is. <laughs> I don't know that. And I looked down at me and said, there, there, there they are again. He's staring at us. He's staring right at us. Well, don't pay no attention to him. Right. I'm going to get up and go over there. He got up and she said, no, sit down. He's coming over here. <laughs> that's, that's our generation that we're living in. Lord, somebody went right over y'all's head. I, can you imagine having my job? Anyway, uh, back to our story here today, uh, boys and girls. They, 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 said they, they said they resisted the truth. And then it said they had corrupt minds. Anybody, anybody know anybody nowadays got a corrupt mind? Good night in the morning. Their minds are filthy in this generation. It's always been bad. When the internet came out, that put us in the sewer, brother. That put us in the sewer. And that's why I give you that illustration. We're, we're flushed already. This country done been flushed. And uh, well, listen, it said they resist the truth. And it said they have rep corrupt minds, reprobate concerning the faith, the faith. There's only one true faith. And he said people was reprobate concerning. What does reprobate mean? You, you should know. You should know. Uh, what, are you, what are you even reading? Uh, reprobate means void of judgment. Unable to make the right call of what's good and bad, right and wrong, wicked, evil, or righteous. That's what reprobate means. And I'm preaching this morning on, on the subject, evil men and seducers. That's what the Bible called them down there in verse 13. He said they'll wax worse and worse. You say, well, Brother Danny, I thought the world was getting better and better. It said it would get worse and worse. You say, but they're making all kinds of scientific advancements and they're able to cure this guy. And, the, and Elon shot a rocket in the, a little ways up. And it hit something or something. I don't know what happened to it. Uh, but they said, nope. It said it'd get worse and worse. You say, but preacher, ain't they going to figure out some way to solve the world's problems? Nope. It's going to get worse and worse. You say, I don't want to hear that. There you go. You resist the truth. The Bible said that it's going to get worse and worse. Morally, uh, religiously, uh, uh, as far as people getting along with each other, hate, war, rumors of wars. I didn't write it. My job just to tell you what it said. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we are living in that day and time. Resisting the truth means that they are unwilling or unable to listen to any truth. Listen to me. They are unwilling or unable to listen to anything that contradicts their lifestyle or what I think that I want to do. I don't want to hear it. I just don't want to hear it. Now, I'm telling you, you better do it like a doctor. You better go like the doctor and say, look, I don't care how bad it is. I don't care how bad it hurts. I don't care what I got to do. If I got to go check in somewhere, if I got to make changes in my life, you tell me the truth, doc. Right? That's what you go to the doctor for. Now, when you come to church here this morning, uh, you, you may not like it, but you're going to get the truth. You may not appreciate it, but you're going to get the truth. And, and that's what it is. Listen, people, we're living in some weird, weird, weird days and times. The Bible said they'd have corrupt minds. Years ago in this country, there was a man by the name of Jack Parson. And you've heard me talk about him a little bit. Jack Parson was an absolute genius, ahead of his time. And back in the early 40s, Jack Parson and his friends would, would uh, experiment with, uh, he's trying to make uh, rockets, invented rocket fuel. Really, the guy's genius. Genius. Jet propulsion fuel. And the, the JPL laboratories, Jet, jet Propulsion Laboratories, uh, most of the people in the know, California, say that really stands for Jack Parson Laboratory, JPL. And Jack Parson was a, a devout student of Aleister Crowley. Aleister Crowley was a man that lived over there in that mansion on Loch Ness, over there where uh, the Loch Ness Monster was. 
And when he was called the beast, they said he was the wickedest man that's ever lived. They called him the beast, 666. And he's in all kind of rituals and trying to contact demonic spirits. And he drew, Aleister Crowley drew a picture of his entity that talked to him. And his name was Leon, uh, Eon or something like that. And it looks just like one of these things uh, that you see that the, that the UFO people see. Look just like it. And uh, that was way back in the 30s and 40s. And Jack Parsons studied under him. He studied under him. And uh, Mr. Crowley, Ozzy Osbourne's song, remember, oh, Mr. Crowley, that's who that song was written about. And Jack Parson, a student with L. Ron Hubbard, and them, they, 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 they got this, and guys are so smart that they thought, there's got to be some other, there's got to be something else. There's got to be something else. And most people that are really smart believe that. Most, most people that are really smart they don't believe we're just all there is and we're just an accident here on this planet stuck here. They, there's got to be some other uh, spiritual realm. There's got to be another dimension somehow or another. Even people who don't believe the Bible believe that there's another realm. And Jim Morrison, the Doors, used to sing about it all the time. And Jim Morrison, he stayed drunk all the time. And he got up and he said, calling on the gods, calling on the gods. We need something more, something to get us through to the other side. And what he's trying to do is punch a hole through that portal and so he could get to the other side and communicate with the God, little G. Little G. Now, all of these things are what me and you know in the Bible as demons and devil. There are no good buddies from outer space that's come to save us. They are entities that come from another dimension. And the, according to the Bible, there's one Holy Spirit and there's a million unclean spirits. And according to the Bible, there's good angels and there's fallen angels that follow Satan. And all this supernatural stuff falls under one of those two categories. Uh, if somebody comes in your room at night and stands at the bottom of your bed and said, I'm your grandma and I really appreciate that dress you bought me that time. And I just want you to know that I'm happy and I can't wait to see you. You know what you better do? You better get up and say, you going back to hell where you come from. Because that is, God don't let grandma come out of heaven and come down here and talk to you and try to be a blessing to you. No, sir. Now, I know some of y'all don't like that, but it's because of your, I don't know, your lack of intelligence of the Bible. Uh, that's not in the Bible. The Bible don't teach junk like that. Uh, you, you, uh, demonic spirits impersonate people that we've known and, and can do that. The Bible says that Satan is transformed as an angel of light. Long story short, Jack Parson invents rocket fuel. The rocket age takes out of 1946. 1947, Roswell happened. And 1948, Israel became a nation. The fig tree put forth its leaves and bud. And then from 1950 on, that's when the knowledge explodes. Computers, all the modern electronics, all the stuff. Can you imagine trying to explain how you've got a cell phone that big and you can punch in the price of eggs right now in China? Bam, it'll pop up just like that. How in the world does something that little well, it's connected to the internet? You, have you thought about that though? I mean, that's coming from a from a, a satellite. I heard Christian, don't get, some of y'all got mad, you're already mad anyway, so I might as well go ahead and, and finish this off right. Uh, uh, I've heard Christian say, oh, I just thank the Lord for the internet. Woo! Boy, Lord have mercy. I don't know what, you've been smoking some bad dope, buddy. I'm telling you, that. are you really trying to tell me you think God gave us thanking the Lord for the internet? You say, well, there's a lot of good on that. You know what, people? People, good night in the morning. Saying there's a lot of good on the internet is the same thing as saying liquor stores are wonderful because they got chapstick for sale. What kind of nut are you? Amen. That's what God's called me to do, make you think. Just because you and your friends got a little out network and you're all the Christians on we ain't a scratch on that thing, brother. There are 200,000, you listen to me, 200,000 child pornography websites on the internet. 200,000. God did a million miles of junk like that. Now you can use it for good. I'm on there right now. I didn't choose to be. People just, 
Lord, I don't know how to put nothing on there, but I'm all over it. I mean, if they want me, they know where to get me. I, I, I'm, I'm sitting duck. And I, I know we can use it for good. You can use chapstick for good. Amen? Well, I just appreciate the fentanyl coming over here because it made my doctor get rich. Well, you're an idiot. What you, yeah, you're crazy. Uh, listen, people, and, and when the Internet came uh, and everything began to change, then all kind of stuff began to happen. You know, tomorrow, everybody's asked me, so I'll go ahead now. I don't ever get to my sermon this morning. Everybody's asked me, do I believe the end of the world is coming tomorrow because of the solar eclipse? And uh, we done went over that a little bit Wednesday night. And uh, no, no, no. You say, what do you believe is going to happen tomorrow, Danny? Nothing. You'll still be as backslid as you are today, probably. Probably. However, <laughs> however, it is sort of weird. It really is sort of weird. You know, the, that, other, that other solar eclipse went across the st uh, United States this way. You seen them things they're putting on? I am um, putting out, heating out uh, news broadcasts and stuff. And that was seven years ago, and it went across seven cities named Salem. That means peace. Salam, like Jerusalem. Salem means peace. And it went across seven cities. Seven years went by, and now we've got another one tomorrow, and it's coming up from the south and going across and making a perfect cross on the United States. It goes across seven cities named Nineveh. And Nineveh was the city that Jonah cried out 40 days, and you're going to be wiped off the face of the earth. And Jesus said, this generation ain't going to get no sign but the sign of Jonah, the prophet. Seven cities Nineveh this way, seven cities that, and lo and behold, right where they cross up there in Indiana, is a city called Rapture. Is that not the weirdest thing you ever heard of in your life? One city in the United States named Rapture, and them two things across it, right there. Bam. Oh, Brother Danny, what does that mean? It don't mean nothing. I've seen stuff like this before. Remember Y2K? Everybody gets all around. All this is is the Lord lets little stuff like that happen. Over, oh, they're, they're supposed to shoot rockets in the air tomorrow too. NASA is to try to figure out and study. And CERN over there, the Hydrogen Collider in Switzerland, Geneva, Switzerland. If you don't know what that is, you're behind. You're behind. In in Geneva, Switzerland, there's the Hydrogen Collider, and it goes. It's underground, the world's largest collider, and their purpose is to study atoms and the God particle. They call it. In other words, they're trying to figure out what caused the Big Bang and how we got here to start with. That's what they're doing. And there are many people. You ought to see the, you ought to see the ritual they performed when that thing opened up. Most ungodly, wickedest thing you've ever seen in your life. People dancing around like demons and stuff over, over a hydrogen collider. Over, and that thing they say is sitting right over the Old Testament uh, temple of Apollo. And the Bible said in Revelation 9, that the angel had a key to that bottomless pit and opened it up and an angel came out of there and called Apollyon. That's like Apollos. And you, I mean, you can't make your stuff up. You say, Brother Dave, what are they doing? Trying to get, trying to get some kind, uh, I'll, I'll read it to you. I wrote down a quote. We are looking at an imminent visit of a superhuman race, legions of them, have been imprisoned for eons and are hungering to come and merge with humanity. Well, who, who's been imprisoned for eons that is wanting to get out of the pit? Now, I'm not saying I believe that. I'm just saying that's what they're saying. They're saying that we may be in for an invasion of spontaneous, spherical entities able to move in and out of our dimension at will. Like in the movies, something will just pop in and there's the devil or something like that, you know, and, then, and all of a sudden it pops out and it goes through something. That stuff's real. And it's really going on. And them little spheres, them things have fallen color and they're, they're the Foo Fighters. You ever heard of the Foo Fighters? Rock group Foo Fighters? You know what that means? Uh, uh, fire. Foo means fire in German. And those German planes were flying in the war and it said these balls of light would follow them planes and they thought they was us 
and we thought they was them, and neither one of them know who it was. They called them Foo Fighters. That's where the Foo Fighters name of the band came from. And they don't understand people seeing them think that's that's like the Brown Mountain Lights, y'all. Little round spheres that come and just do this and move like this and move like that. They're saying that's what we're supposed to be pulling out. CERN is located in that in that thing. Huh? Not only that, the Katydids are going to come and destroy us all. But thank God the Lord's coming tomorrow so we don't have to worry about it. You better sit with your feet untangled and pay your bills and get right with your wife, buddy. You got 24 hours. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. But honest to goodness, we don't know. Who knows? The Lord might come tomorrow. But that don't mean, that don't mean nothing. That don't mean nothing. The, the, the 17 year locust and the 30 year locust are both coming on us this summer. You don't be able to walk outside, they'll be all over the young ones. <laughs> seriously, seriously, it's going to be back to all the southern states. I dreaded it, camp, man. I hope they eat in 20 million gnats eat and die of the coronavirus. But I'm telling you, uh, they, they say that they, they say that we're in for it. Listen, I wouldn't be surprised nowadays. I, I wouldn't be surprised nowadays if somebody popped up out there and said, "I'm Superman from another world," and and then a curtain opens up and Bigfoot walks out and got Taylor Swift on one hand and, and Jelly Roll on the other side and, and come down and we said the world having peace. I wouldn't. Have, ain't no telling what we're liable to see before this thing's over. The Bible does say there be signs in the sun and in the moon. And in the stars and all of these things. But ladies and gentlemen, the end is not yet. But it is getting worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. The power grid. This is my opinion. I don't know. I, I know the last thing they hit us with was that coronavirus back in 2020. And uh, I don't know what you believe about that. But when that thing first happened, I mean, I mean, within a week, within a week, in my gut, something was saying, this ain't, something ain't right with this. Something ain't right with this. This is more than just a, a strain of the flu. It's like we was lab rats. Did you get that feeling? Like we're, we're, being, we're being experimented on. And that's what it felt through the whole thing. If you got spiritual discernment, uh, you, begin, you begin to feel like that. I'm not a conspiracy theorist. I don't believe every conspiracy that comes down the road. But I believe the Bible. And I ain't, I ain't dumb. And I'm telling you, buddy, there's they stuff going on now that, that just... That I, I think everybody's saying the next one's coming, the next one's coming, the next one's coming. I'll tell you what I think. If it happens, don't say I'm a prophet because I'm not. I think the next time it's not going to be a, a sickness you get in your body. Our power grid's going to go down, like, like the internet gets shut off a day or two. If the internet went down for a day, our nation would be on its knees. You couldn't do nothing. Oh, that'll never happen. No, they done done it the other day. Remember, remember that little experiment. Remember that that, that can't be an accident. If the internet went down to that just for a day, then people would say, "Get it back on, get it back on." Well, it's going to it don't matter. We'll double what we'll get it back on. But if you talk about brain. Some of you people would go into DTs. You wouldn't know how to act. You you live like this right here. You, you can't listen to the weather. You don't know if it's Monday or Tuesday. Uh, you don't know if it's up and down, day or night. You live with that right there. You're addicted. You've got a problem. You need to go have a phenectomy from a doctor, brother, or something, and have that thing t uh, surgically removed from your... I'm telling you, it's not right to be so addicted to something that if you have to do without a day or two, you about die. <whistles> Preach it, Brother Danny. I mean, if you use to pay your bills and do your job and stuff, that's one thing, but... That ain't must uh, what it must have been used for. Earthquake, New York City. First time ever. Did you hear about that? Statue of Liberty got struck by lightning. And somebody took a picture of it. You say, that, I don't even know that's real or not. They can blue beam something up there in the sky, and you swear up and down it's real, and it ain't. You know what that book says right there? That book said, in them last days, God's going to send strong delusion that they believe a lie and be damned because they received not the truth. You, listen, we ain't no game here, people. You better get a hold of the truth. You better get saved. You better get your heart right with God. Quit pushing Him. 
You know what you can do? You can keep pushing God, pushing God, and pushing. He'll finally smack you. He'll do it. And he's going to. Did you hear about that old woman? Was that the why? And this weird per something or another trans guy, something or another came in and was shaving, going to the bathroom. And she said, no, you can't come in here. There's little girls in here changing. I like, come in here. I'm this, I'm that. I don't, so I don't care what you claim. You are what you are. It don't matter what you believe. See, I can believe I'm Michael Jordan all day long, but I ain't. Amen? I mean, you can believe you're Benjamin Franklin or an oak tree. It's your business. I don't care. But don't expect me to believe that junk because it ain't true. And you know what happened? The older woman got in trouble and they banned her from coming back to the Y. Now listen, people. When it gets like that, when it gets to the point where you reporting a crime makes you guilty of a crime, we're messed up. We're messed up. We're messed up. Now as Janese and Jambres withstood Moses, last Sunday, Trans Visibility Day on Easter Sunday, are you kidding me? You said, well, they couldn't have, don't tell me they couldn't have. You can't tell me that couldn't have been put off to the next day. If it had been Ramadan, they'd have put it off to the next day. I'm telling you this morning, people, they resist the truth. Corrupt mind. And I, I can feel it right in here this morning. Some of y'all sitting there saying, I cannot believe he said, I cannot believe he said. You know, it's because you ain't been the doctor in so long, you forgot what truth sounds like. I'm telling you the truth. I'm telling you the truth. We're in the last days. Bigfoot's going to run for president and everything going cattywampus. That's the prophecy. <laughs> Handwriting's on the wall, brother. Doomed. Handwriting's on the wall. I pray God give us many, many years of peace to raise our kids and our grandkids and, and to see them grow. I do. Maybe he will. But the truth is this morning, we don't know we got another day. We don't. If you're here this morning and you're not saved, you don't know that you've got another day to live. Like, like the dear lady that they had to take to the hospital here just a minute ago. It was a weird thing. And we don't know. You don't never know. You could be sitting there or on your way home today, bam, gone just like that. God help us this morning in last days. You know why we have youth rally? You know why? There ain't nothing you've got going on more important. And that youth rally that weekend. God help us. God help us. In these days. Be very with him. I'm, I'm closing this morning. Miss Jessie's coming. And this has been scattered. I didn't even have you an outline. But I want you to. I want you to stand. I want you to bow your head please. Our heads are bowed. And our eyes are closed. Nobody's talking. Nobody's moving. Our heads are bowed. And our eyes are closed. Nobody's talking. How long has it been since you really got serious with God? Well, preacher, I don't do what I want to do. Well, that's a, that's a big mistake right there. That's a big mistake. My advice to every Christian here this morning is get down here and get down on your knees. Let's get our heart ready for the youth rally and get everybody we can saved and take them home and be with us when we go home. We might go to heaven tomorrow. I don't know. Might go today. Might go Wednesday. Might go Friday. Nobody knows that. That's, uh, you know, don't pay no attention to stuff like that. You better pay attention to that book, though. And that book said, no man knows the day or the hour. The Bible said, boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. She plays softly this morning. I want you to search your heart. Seriously. Seriously. How long has it been? How long has it been since you just got down on your knees and said, Lord, I need to get down to business. Come, something's coming already. I just get out of a seat. Come on right now. Young lady, young man, Brother Danny, I need to, I need to quit fooling around here. This may be the last youth rally we ever have. We may not even make it. I don't know. We may not be back here tonight. I don't know. I hope we are. I hope the Lord gives us time to work, but the best thing that could happen would be for Jesus to come. Would you come this morning? Others are coming. You might pray these little girls coming here. Uh, 
Amen. Uh, the lady that had to be taken to the hospital got about five kids here this morning. Come every service. They're be praying for her and others. God help us this morning. God help us this morning. Time to quit messing around, people. Time to quit playing games, teenagers. Father, I pray right now in Jesus' name, Lord. Holy Ghost, come down here and do a great work this morning. Lord, I know the devil's fought this service tooth and nail. But I pray he will not have the victory. I claim the victory in Jesus' name by the blood of Christ. Lord, I thank you for all that you've done for us. We pray now that you'd bless in this invitation. Thank you for these that have already come. I pray that you'd move in every heart and every life. I ask you, God, that you'd touch every single person here tonight or this morning. God, do a great and mighty work here tonight. And Lord, I pray during the nights of the youth rally and all through the next few weeks, the Holy Ghost come do a great work. In Jesus' name we pray, and for His sake we ask it. Have your way now, in Jesus' name. Amen. We're singing this morning. We're singing this morning. If you need to come, why don't you just come this morning? Do business with the Lord. Come do business with the Lord like these are. Come and do business with the Lord. That's right. Amen. Amen. Come and do business with God. You're going to face Him one day. You're going to face Him one day. Have thine own way, Lord. Have thine own way. You come this morning. How about it, ma'am? How about it, young lady? Amen. Amen. This young lady coming here has got some special needs. I'll pray for her. Others need to come this morning. Amen. One of you ladies pray this girl coming here. Amen. Have thine own way, Lord. Have thine own way. Amen. Amen. Search me and try me, <coughs> Master, today. Oh, yes. Hey, Whiter hey. than snow, Lord. Watch me just now. Hey, now. As in my presence, humbly I bow. You sing it with us today, everybody. Have thine own way, Lord. Have thine own way. Yes, amen. Weary. Help me, I pray. Oh, God, help us. Power, oh, power. Amen. Yeah, Surely is thine. Yes, thank God. Hallelujah. Touch me and heal me. Say more. She's playing softly this morning. Thank the Lord. That's the only thing I say last Sunday morning. We have four people saved here last Sunday on Easter Sunday. Nine, I'll tell you. Six o'clock. Six o'clock. Won't name no name. We'll talk about it tonight. Six o'clock. It's a very, very, very important service tonight. We're fighting demonic powers and spirits. The Bible calls it principalities and power. Thank God Jesus got the victory over all of them. Praise the Lord. Amen. I'm still praying this morning. Uh, while they're praying, if you don't want to forget tonight, You'll put the youth rally down if you're visiting with us. That's April 19, 20, and 21 at the Burke County Fairground. I want all of our people to help us work, to give extra to pay the bills, and to bring your car full of people. Invite your neighbors, invite your cousins, your family, your friends. Have them there both nights. If you know anybody who's struggling with addictions, drugs, Alcohol, any kind of addiction. If you know anybody struggling with addiction, that's a dumb question, ain't it? Get them there on Friday night. Brother Barry Spears, former Hell's Angel writer, he's on drug group, got the best testimony I've ever heard. Uh, beside him and, and Bill Kidd, I help try to help somebody that goes out addiction. He'll be there on Friday night. He'll be there on Friday night, the 19th. Get them there. The Lord can do more in that service that Friday night, with him preaching and everybody praying fasting than ever rehab in the world can do. He can. God can do it. God can set a man free. God can set a woman free. Don't miss that Friday night. Then on Saturday night, we're doing a message for every teenager in the country called the Hag 
has never been told. The choir is going to be helping me. It'll be something really, really special. So choir, be ready tonight. We're going to practice some stuff. Uh, we're not in choir practice, but we'll do it during the service tonight. Come praying, and uh, we're ready to go. Amen? Hearts clear? All right. All right. God bless you. Uh, continue to pray for those that are not able to be here. Pray for the Messer family uh, that lost their mom. I'm, planning, I'm going over there here in a little bit, the funeral home in Lenore, and then trying to get stuff ready and be back here for tonight. And uh, remember those that are sick, not able to get out, that people had to work, and uh, a lot of people need our prayers this morning. Uh, God will help them. Okay? All right. Let's bow our head and we'll be dismissed for prayer. Everybody fellowship. Be friendly uh, uh, before, before we go. Colonel Sanders is here. I'm going to ask him if he'll dismiss us. Go ahead.